team fights well in competitive because of the mobility of the champion. Uh, Yusui getting it again. He's actually one of the players I feel like has gotten the, his hands on Akali most often. And it does set up Dignitas for some, some pretty aggressive solo lanes here. Uh, although obviously all Akali lanes pretty much uh, until you're level six, you are, are playing back. You are usually going to give up your early wave control. That might be difficult uh, considering that Golden Guardians can go for a super aggro pick there for a blaze in the mid lane and try and you know open up the game trying to combine with Iconic's Diana. Yeah, a ton of options here though, as uh, already done with phase one actually. Now was the last pick for GG, so mm -hmm. Felios gonna get banned away. Feel like he's been kind of the next default AD carry with Ezu getting yeah. somewhat kicked out of the meta with Divine Sunderer being taken down many notches for range specifically. And I kind of like that ban as well because what Golden Guardians are, are throwing down in the early game is, hey, we are gonna play bottom triangle of the map. We're picking the Narn to Renekton, which is the stay at range, avoid getting dove early, avoid getting your flash blown early, just as long as the Volibear Renekton does not get a dive off on you, does not get a kill on you, you are going to scale quite nicely for a team fight AoE Wombo combo based around a Diana game for you. And they want to play around this Kalista. This is Stixay's Kalista, probably his second most famous champion right behind the Caitlyn. So I want to see- Sustana, it. hello? Uh, to me, the Callista was was a bigger highlight, but did get the championship with Tristana. <laughs> I mean, look, he's very good in all these champions. I agree with you. I think uh, Callista is one of his better ones. So nice to see him back with it here. And clearly, Golden Guardians are willing to give him priority. Uh, Varus, Felios, though, the last two AD bands and two mid bands there for a Blaze of TF. And LeBlanc, two oh, very man. smart bands against Akali. Yeah. Out there. I really have wanted to see TF pop up in NA because it's popping up all over the world, except for here so far. So hopefully we get some uh, you know, more of that map wide play soon. But good pointing out, you know, multiple champions that can reveal Akali in the Shroud with the LeBlanc being a premier one as well. Double lock-in of the Zyra Khan bottom. This is one of the more, I feel like should get used more frequently. I agree. against Diana being so popular and this hard dive coming in. Uh, the Zyo easily able to ult it. We'll see what happens here though. A blaze. Is he gonna actually take the Tristana? It is gonna be Tristana for him. So Nautilus plus the Kalista, very aggressive on bottom side. Want to see if they can actually play off this. They've, they've got the matchups to do it. With mid lane having a Tristana into a Kali matchup, you always want to try and push in early, get those turret plates down. It's one of the ones where it's super highly popularized. You can either get a lot of turret plate money, or guess what? You push the Akali in, your own bottom with the Kalista Nautilus lane, and then you look for your kills. Plus, you can get rewards afterwards, either turret plates or dragons. Yeah, you can kind of see what Golden Guardians want to do, right? They've got enough front line to let the damage deals get it done. Lots of CC as well, which might be tough against the likes of Rakan and Akali, especially given the uh, the meatballs in the front side for Dig as well with Renekton and Volibear. But we'll see how it plays out. For me, Tristana is kind of the champion that we saw Blaze Olive kind of first have one of those really big games. Right? And it was quite a while ago, right? Back in spring. But to me, that was maybe the start of like, oh, like this is what this player could be like, right? This is the player that I saw in Academy when yeah. I watched him play for two years. This is the player people were hyping up when he was first drafted in Scouting Grounds. And it is nice to see that he has risen to that occasion, starting to become more comfortable on the stage and stronger and stronger in these games. Yeah. I will say too, it's a very fun support matchup because whichever support gets the early move on the other one is gonna have a huge advantage. Uh, Nautilus into the Rakan. You have so many little mini bumps and uh, CC that are not greatly reduced by tenacity from the Nautilus kit, because although there is a mini stun in the ultimate, it's mostly for the knockup. You get the hook with your bounce back with your little knockup oh. and your passive route. So there's so a lot of options to try and get the, the early kills. And if you can break uh, you know, catch the Rakan on, on the E out, then you can definitely kill them. But on the same token, if Rakan gets the initiation on the Nautilus, it's hard for Renatus to reactively activate the Aftershock. And without Aftershock, they can definitely focus you down. Yeah, kind of uh, just a walking target there. Pretty squishy with the Aftershock proc, so have to be a bit careful. Try and die nice and early, by the way. I was speared by Callista in the fountain, which means he was a bit late, but luckily for everyone, teams are just fanning out across the river here, so. Looks like no invades, uh, no brawn this game, so I guess no team wanting to take an early risk here. 
Yeah, you generally want to look down for sweepers as well. We get the just standard jungle switch over here. You see Iconic, you go place your Trinket Ward, recalls, switches back over to the sweeper, but doesn't doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of late invade for them. There's, there's not a lot of need for them to split map. Uh, as we said, there's a very clear tr arrow on the Golden Guardians matchup here for pointing straight towards the bottom side of the map. And that means their Callista Nautilus not going to want to leash. So very easy route here from Iconic. Just start on top side on your red. Uh, full clear towards that bottom side. Yeah, pretty much the bottom as well for Kadian. He's getting help from the bottom lane, right? So they'll know that'll be late. Both jungles will be yeah. uh, pretty easily deduced here despite no wards. It's just very different goals for the early stages of the game for both teams. Guess what? One team has Renekton into Nar top side, <laughs> and the other team has Callista Nautilus bottom side. So see if uh, they're able to accomplish that goal quicker. Some defensive warding can definitely go a long way for Solo, too. I think generally Solo is able to play these matchups quite well on topside when he knows, hey, I'm not getting jungle attention um, and, and should be able to control the minion wave. Right now, uh, he's going to want to be able to push the, the third one in so that he can actually get it bouncing back because Volibear is going to end his route. And Volibear is a jungle champion that could very easily and oftentimes wants to actually end his jungle clear early in order to go for a gank instead. Definitely not a power clearing champion. And we'll see if on level three, Acadian, you know, has got the option to try and get some early ganks up top side. Solo just now moves into river, so Fake God can communicate, hey, we should be tracking his ward timer. It's very easy to track top laner ward timers. Solo basically has to use his trinket ward there. Uh, and so you can actually easily route around that as a jungler if you really want to force on top side. You know, you can go that long route through the ramp over by the Raptor camp and they just ping on it. So maybe he is doing it. Um, and you know that he warded here in the river. So yeah, this is this is straight out. You can just uh, do this at home in solo yeah. too. <laughs> well, kind of to what you were saying, I do agree. I think solo is actually a very good weak side top laner, but we'll see if he gets punished here in just a moment. Bottom side though, Chime going in and the rest of the team going in as well. Aphromu going to get rooted in the front Nautilus. side. Ignite is down though. Chime is so low and that's looking like a kill. Afro is going to get ignited as well. Needs one more. The Teleport's coming in, and Aphromu, he's just going to be left to the dead. Oh, it feels bad, man. As the Blaze Orb is going to get Neo's Flash, and First Blood's going to go over, but Solo did indeed die. Nice call, Kobe. <laughs> so, patient time. We set it up. Guess what? Each team has an arrow from Champ Select. Dignitas arrow points right towards top side. Guess what? They get their top side play, but uh, Golden Guardian's arrow points uh, bottom side. They get theirs. Solo uh, returns. This looks very spooky. Mininar is... Uh... Very fragile champion getting zoned off now. He's got flash. There's, there's no way he's going to die here. You don't know that. Again. <laughs> okay, there is a way, <laughs> but we would greatly criticize him if it did happen. Well, Solo's okay. So you, once again, Kobe's all right. Missing on CS over Solo is going to feel a bit bad, but it's just going to scoop up what he can as we'll watch this one again. Again, okay, so Nautilus goes in, but when the Aftershock falls off here, it becomes so squishy. And you like where Aframu actually placed the W on Rakan. Because, yeah, Chime can walk back and, oh, look, I didn't get knocked up, but he had to walk back in closer uh, towards tower, towards the Zaya. So got chunked down really low there. It's just that they didn't have quite enough damage. Aphromu could not get the squeeze there to finish off the kill. And with the teleport in from Tristana, they were the ones that got to have the last laugh. They kill off the Rakan on exit. And so it is very good news on the top side for Dignitas, but... Opposite side of the coin on bottom for Golden Guardians because Chime's got the calculator pastry time. <laughs> Definitely uh, held on to the last few precious points of health as Solo is going to look to get aggressive behind a tower of his own here, but just going to clear the wave out. Not wanting to get any uh, do any damage here to Fake God and then draw the ire of the turret. But very nice clear there for Solo. Ooh, even going to get some... Uh, Demolition happening. And the biggest point about this is why he's doing it. Because this could look like crazy play. But Iconic already went the long route through the jungle, placed this control ward. They know for sure Volibear is bottom triangle of the map. Uh, he can see the camps up here on blue side. Good ward by Fake God himself to keep him himself safe here. He does see the Diana prepping, so he's going to go for the teleport. Even shows, hey, I had a ward here on you, buddy. I'm going to pop this cone early. Nope. Flash, stun. Ooh, everyone's over the top. Uh, solo there. Can't really help but Iconic, but Iconic needs some help here. Fake God already doing so much damage. Here comes the Volibear. Iconic just left for dead and will indeed be slain by Acadian. 
That's a five head by Fake God. Places the ward. He sees the Diana. Once Diana goes down into the Gromp, Fake God's like, I got him. <laughs> Teleport channel, calling Made the Gungler. Acadian's up there again. Solo. Does have flash here. Gonna have to maybe scoop one away. Fake God indeed. Ooh. But the stun is gonna happen, and Solo is just barely gonna live. It's still punishing, though, because there's no teleport here for Solo. Mm -hmm. So they can run his but back to the village. <laughs> and that tail back. <laughs> and uh, Solo is going to be OK, but uh, his tower, not so much. Plate Gold now going over. Now it's Fake God's turn to proxy a wave. And Solo should live here. Fake God is probably not going to check this, and indeed won't. And bottom side again, Neo in trouble. But Stixay ripping the spears out, almost grabs the kill. Neo low, but not dead. Tower. And now Stixay getting ignited. And from who's going to turn it back around? <laughs> A tower shot is enough. This bottom lane paint. Oh, pastry time. Uh, every time we pan our camera down here, it is so close on the bottom side of the map. This time around, the extra damage from the tower shot takes out Stixay. He used flash. His, it was his heal. Okay, his heal was definitely down as far as this replay. Uh, this is our, our top side event, though, once again. So Iconic, I guess he doesn't think there actually is a ward there, and he thinks that's a natural recall from, from Renekton. So he doesn't think that he's been found out. But they saw Volibear heading up on the control ward. I just saw on that minimap, they definitely had vision of Acadian. So Iconic um, definitely overstays, but is able to flash to the opposite side of the Blast Cone, so gains some distance here. As you know, though, it's not enough distance. Conqueror Renekton chases him down. Acadian's like, you know what? All that hard work, Fate God, well done. Take the kill. <laughs> Thanks. 2-0 uh, <laughs> now for Acadian. Feeling thank pretty you, good. Thank you. <laughs> Got the chain ready to go, building in towards that Divine Sandra. Solo is... Trying to continually pressure here in the 1v1, but Fake God's feeling just fine. Up about a wave of CS so far. Mid lane, though, is uh, actually good news for Yasui. He's level 7, hasn't died, and the CS is pretty even. So you call that a win with only uh, one plate taken by Tristano. Yeah, one plate uh, in payment for the matchup here from Yasui. Uh, as you said, uh, Teleport looks like it's just about to come off cooldown, so he's actually in a very good position. Dark Seal ready. Go back, get your purchase. You're level 6. You can... Definitely look to make some plays. Maybe go for the mini nar because bottom side is already full. Fade's called pop. Trying to get two there, but Stixay now caught out of position. Aphromoo is just going to dive straight on. Kill goes over to Neo. TP in now as the Blaze Olive was trying to roam down. Iconic did finish the red buff steal, but it's Yasui in hot pursuit looking for the kill. Does have flash. Does have ulti as well, but a Blaze Olive. Gonna get Buster shot it back there, but the dive is just too much. Yasui should be able to get the execution. Oh. Damage not oh. quite there. He flashes back in. Oh. Last little bit of damage wasn't there as he gets a thumbs up for the attempt. Oh, whoops, a daisy. That was a cue early, and then he's <laughs> flashing in to try and just get the extra bit of damage. Can't quite do it. Uh, if you flash first, had the distance, maybe they finish that off. Uh, in fact, they do. But in the end, still okay because they are going to force mid out and make use of the roam in order to get that Rift Herald. Yeah, Candian actually having a ton of impact here in this early game. Gonna go ahead and grab the Herald for his team. It's Fake God and Solo is still duking it out here 1v1. Solo gets the push back, but that's more on the wave than actual damage on the Fake God. But Fake God is gonna try and pull it away. It's uh, three people now outside the Herald. Enough though for Acadian to pick up the eye as GG are way too late to look to contest. Yeah, even with the, with the extra move now for the reset, with the supports getting back out here, you know, Chime, they're just, they're just too little, too late on that roam. The objective already gone. The successful play mid already taken place. So the only real benefit for them here, 6A on bottom side with the Callista able to push Zai in no problem. Does get straight up to the tower. And he's got that CS lead. At least he can hold on to that despite the unfortunate set of deaths that he has had recently with the extra tower shot taken. No heal use. Flash will come off cooldown pretty quickly though. Gold is also even. Uh, which has to feel pretty good for Golden Guardians, given that they had three kills down. But again, have Stixie with his lead. He'll be very important come the mid game. And Blaze Olive still farming up, feeling pretty good about what's happening in his lane and the plates he's been able to take there as he did grab a second just in mid. There is this Infernal Dragon to consider. Looks like Chime is in the area. And you can see uh, from the gold charts, it is the two marksmen on the Golden Guardian side currently at the top. Although Neo in third's pretty nice, given that he hasn't had uh, that much fun in lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely looking like the objectives are going to at least keep going their way. The bottom Scryer's Bloom popped here. 
Aphromu is setting up for it, and they're calling Yasui down. Yasui's half health, and I can't see if he has ult. Chime goes in though, Akkadian gonna be the target, but he has ult defense, called pop to Kenny, now back into a blaze, Olive! With the Q back there with Chime, yeets out of the ulti, Dragon goes over to Golden Guardians as Yasui is forced to run away, but the spear range not quite there, Sticks they won't find the slow, and Dignitas will walk away. Yeah, very dangerous here. Oh, still oh so for big. TP in, looking for the wall, doesn't find it. Gets the scoop onto Afro, though, as Chime once again is lining up the hook. Great ult there out of Neo, and a good flash as well out of Afro is going to keep the bottom lane alive for now. But Iconic ready with the ulti, finds the Q. Does have the flash. How much does he want to commit? Neo's the target now. No ulti, flash force there. Still slowed, though. That's going to be a kill as Iconic grabs oh! it. Oh! He didn't mean it, but boy, it looked good. That's a double out of Iconic. That's what you get when both targets are lined up. Uh, Blaze all of easily able to rocket jump out of this one. But yeah, the the lovers duo betraying each other. As uh, Zaya dies just in time, they're lined up. So the hook aimed for the front one, able to get the Recon right behind him. And guess what? Two birds with one stone. Yep. One anchor. <laughs> Two birds with one anchor. Good uh, fishing there by Chime. As Solo is going to go ahead and meet the Herald before it gets another charge. Nope. Does do the damage there to the tower, but Solo is going to collect the gold from this wave. That does mean first tower gold goes over to Dig. So Fake God and Akkadian kind of reaping the benefits of all of their pressure in the top side. So Stride Breaker already done for Fake God. Akkadian still feeling pretty good at 201 and now has finished his Divine Sunder as well. Gold is still pretty close, so Golden Guardians yeah. uh, don't need to panic just yet. I mean, I'm just ha I'm having fun with all the action that we're getting. Oh yeah, <laughs> time uh, just coming up over and over here. The junglers definitely are focal points for both of it. I have to say though, Dig, they way overreached at this dragon setup. Golden Guardians had a much better setup setup on it just initially with the Callista already towards Dragon, fully able to rend it out. And then the bottom lane, even after it was already taken and mid lane pressure was achieved by Golden Guardians, the bottom lane still went so far up into the river. And here's our double bird kill. Okay, uh, Iconic's able to burst him down <laughs> just in time. I'm gonna say, you know what, credit to the team. That was uh, that was also calculated. Iconic's like, don't worry, I got him. Early anchor. <laughs> Rakan won't see it coming. It's like Burst the, him down in time. It's the advanced version when Blitz might yeah. the minion to try and hook a champion. Good just, timing there from Iconic. Good just time. treating Neo like a minion there <laughs> for Iconic. Diana Burst yeah. says bye-bye to AD Carry. Flashless ult with Zaya. Pretty much a cast of minion. It's fake god. He's going to get Dominus rolling here. Solo in trouble. Forced to flash away. His fake god's starting to amp up the pressure. Yeah, Fake God been doing pretty well for himself. Here goes the Akali games, though. Back goes the Akali. The place all over just shoots him back with Buster Shot, but Yasui, <laughs> at least the blanks and pressure. Yeah, as if Akali itself didn't have enough dashes in the kit already. <laughs> you add in the Buster Shot from a, a Blaze. Good disengage there for, for a Blaze, though, able to keep Yasui off him. Gotta use him sometimes. You know, just gotta press your ulti. It's been a while, right? There's no fights happening. Dragon's not up for two minutes. Yeah. Just press him. You'll gotta, probably be back. Gotta be careful. If the Akali's got a shuriken sticking out of you, um, then uh, then uh, might and not want to. That's a bad time for you. Yeah. Do it a little bit early. Some stuff, though. Okay, so people generally just complain about Akali because Correct. he's quite strong right now. But we c we have time to delve in into why exactly because it's actually really fun to play the champion. Oh yeah, it it's uh, it's fun to meme about it, but it's actually a really fun assassin to play because she does what very few other assassins can do in the game and can actually team fight pastry because of the the scaling on her Q where they they lowered the energy cost as you rank it up. Once you get that level nine, it feels so juicy to have max rank Q. It's only like 70 energy at that point, which means that Akali now has enough burst in her kit with all the extra damage loaded onto E that you can get your first kill on a priority target simply by doing your R1 into E1 combination by hit confirming it since R1 is now targeted. And then you go back in with your passive auto already charged to get your E2 damage, plus your passive auto, plus your Q to be able to finish off target number one. And then guess what? You're left with shrouding within the enemy team to buy the time, and your R2 second charge is just sitting there, waiting for that AoE execution damage for the rest of the team fight. So beyond just assassinating one squishy target with your normal combination there, you have another one left over that is AoE, that is execution damage, and that's where you get a lot of those highlight Akali pentakill type of situations actually coming out, and why this is basically the most picked assassin 
throughout competitive play. Yeah, especially with an item like Riftmaker, right? It makes you much more of a Brawly style champion, which is not what you expect from, you know, your typical fragile but mobile assassins. Uh, Kali really strong, and maximizing the passive if you want to play at home, definitely the way to go, because she doesn't really do much, especially with Garbage Can level 1 Q. Yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> but later, when your Q is 70 That's energy, it's you a lot actually... Better. Oh, here we go for T-Fight. Teleport coming in flank. Bro getting in there, finds one in the back line. Iconic stunned up forever, trying to rock up out of the way, but will be slain by Neo. And now Fake God is going to get the ulti out of Stix8. And Golden Guardian is going to have to play a 4v5. All right. The R2 expires now for Akali. So they got the first kill without having to use it. Now they won't have another charge, though, for the actual Dragon Fight. Golden Guardian's already down one member, though. And without Diana, that is definitely risky. Not a lot of ultis to press here, but I are going to at least maybe try and poke them. But nothing to really get. Stixay actually shoving in the midway. We'll get it. That's a really nice bit of counterplay. So it does at least make sure that's how it goes down. But Dignitas definitely winning out there. Yeah. And and to your point about the, the Rift Herald build and, you know, and the Conqueror style for Akali, we talk about a lot of the initial burst and the combination. That's that's fun to pull off. But the biggest point about the energy cost of the Q going down so much is that, hey, with Q spamming later on and your passive being constantly applied as you can just back up and, and uh, get more passive autos, it becomes also a DPS output in teamfights. So it's not just burst damage. Biggest thing to me too, for junglers, hey, give energy champions blue buff. Yes, it, please. It, it actually turns Akali into a machine gun, okay? It, it, uh, it definitely benefits them quite well. Over the years, you know, there have been different times uh, where you, you weight it more heavily or less heavily. Now is definitely one of those times where you actually get a huge benefit out of it. It's like little baby Earth mode. It is. Kali just can't stop clicking Q. Oh, this is very interesting. Blaze off getting the max distance here, but I'm trying to make it happen. Oh, Kali! Just so good, a Blaze Olive does get hit by the skill shot, and as a result, does die as Acadian is going to make it two here for Dignitasi Sui, just kiting around and trying so unbelievably dead. Who gets the kill? Shuriken! Goes for the Kali. <laughs> yes. As soon as you got that Shuriken sticking out of your back, you're just walking away. Five steps, you know you're doomed. Solo on the top side, though, going to try and get something back here for Golden Guardians. And remember, the gold has remained competitive. Uh, with all the talk about Akali and, and this kind of uh, conversation warping champion uh, in the meta right now, they are still plugging away here for the Golden Guardians. They do have a very nice AoE combo available to them if they can transition to this towards the mid game. Yeah, secondary Rift Herald is going over to Dig, but not going to be a big deal if Golden Guardians can properly manage their Gnar Rage Bar and get the Dream Initiation. Nautilus Ultimate into Diana plus Gnar. That, that is a, an AoE dream here for Golden Guardians. Definitely going to be tricky, though, again. Well, we keep talking about it, but she's kind of the biggest difference, right, in these comps. Akali's so good at singling out a carry and trying to kill them. Thankfully, Golden Guardians brought two, so they were prepared to play up against Akali in uh -huh, that regard. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, if she runs around putting your backline, you're probably not going to win that team fight with uh, a Callista and a Tristana. So we'll see how Golden Guardians navigate when those fights do come around. It's even on breaks <laughs> right now, so it is going to be a bit of a longer game as a Blaze Olive senses something is wrong. Well, he's got his whole team navigating over here, so uh, do, 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 do. I, I don't think he feels like anything is wrong. May I don't think they actually know that this Akali's in the brush. And it's definitely beneficial to remain unseen for Akali right now because the entire Golden Guardians team had been rotating Good over. Night, Blaze Olive. Ooh, ah. it's very interesting. Boss to jump back again. A Blaze yeah. Olive trying to run. No, it's not ah. happening. You assume they're going to get dove on by Solo. That's going to be the counter kill Golden Guardians are looking for. And now they're going to maybe try and kill the tower and play the 4v4. Yep, tower dead. Acadian in the front side goes golden there as Afrim is running around. Fates call pop. Stixay still hopping mad around the back line. And Chime goes in, goes golden though as Iconic does the same. It's Stixay still looking to try and find the damage with Dig. Have uh, sectioned off the rest of Golden Guardians. Neo is going to take down Iconic, and Stixa is still battling, but there's just nothing left to fight for. Yeah, Dignitas on the chase here. I think they should be able to get Chime. Oh, oh five, two. so good by Fake God. Dashes through one, dashes again, Strive breaks both, and that's going to give Dignitas oh, the eighth as Chime. <laughs> it's going to live. Rakan going down, though, and somehow Stixa is still alive as Fake God is going to finish what he started. That's the delayed <laughs> ace they were looking for. They're not done yet. Here comes Oblaze. Oblaze. 
have. All right, gets on in there, TPs through. Fake God now again, still hunting. Dash one, stun, job's done. There's a Q out of Renekton. Ding, 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 ding. The champion of the arena is Fake God. Renekton Pilot extraordinaire <laughs> ends with the red buff. Last champion left standing. Everybody else taking a fall in this top side brawl pastry time. And that's what we're saying. This is, these are fun bangers here. Dan. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Digger are uh, pulling ahead, right? 2,000 gold ahead. There's going to uh, be a dragon to fight for in 30 seconds, but Stride Breaker, Connoisseur, Fake God, definitely putting the finishing touches on that fight as Golden Guardians are going to have to rally back and yeah. look to play for this next objective. It's so nice, too, actually. You know, new Stride Breaker, insanely effective against Kalista with the attack oh, speed yeah. slow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so brutal. Just keep, keeping her pinned down. Here's Yasui lying in wait, seeing eyeballing this Tristana for so long. Ablaze, he tried to rocket jump over, I think, too far of an angle over the wall there. That's why he hopped just straight up in the air. Uh, and if you don't make it that far, then you're going to oh get Oh my back. god, what is going on? Ablaze all is taking down Afro. Fake on the front line. Trying to make it happen, but he's left for dead as well. And now that's another one as Ablaze Olive is moving in. Yasui going to try and make it happen. Trying to assassinate Ablaze Olive, but it's not going to happen. Mortal Assault, he follows through, and it's the counter ace out of Golden Bear. Guardians. That's going to be Baron for Golden Guardians. They've done it. Pastry time. And guess what? Golden Guardians are currently on a two-game win streak. They're heating up. They're about to be on fire. Pastry, if they can take down Dig here. What a reward for that team fight baron on top of all the gold for an ace pastry time it's not always about do you kill everyone on the enemy team it's what time are they all dead and this is the perfect time certainly for golden guardians as they will collect the baron go back and spend their gold now they're the team 2000 gold ahead but it should be a lot better as we'll watch the flip the switch rock out replay all right, let's get right back into it, because it is Dignitas trying to start it out. They get the flash initiation from Rakan, from Afromo here, but Ablaze all just blows him up on Tristana instantly. Diana does get the ultimate off before dying, so was able to do his job there. Iconic did die, the sacrifice that, that Golden Guardians were willing to make here. Uh, Blaze Olive then able to flash out at the attempted counter kill there from Akali. Turns it right back around and they chase down the extra kill here with Nautilus Chime hooking him in. So really nicely cleaned up there by the Golden Guardians. They did have to sacrifice their jungler, but that is definitely worth it for them. All right, we'll see how much damage Golden Guardians can get done with the Red Bull Baron buff. Trying with a hook, though, finds Akkadian. Not all that tanky. Forced to ulti out, though, will keep him safe and a bit healthier as Golden Guardians are looking for this mid-tier, too. Yeah, easy side check here for Solo. He's just looking around for any flankers. Uh, while he's Meganar, you can easily face check. I like this from Golden Guardians. They're not taking any risks. Send in the Meganar. Make sure nobody's lying in these brush. Put your control wards down. Set yourselves up for your dragon control if Dignitas try and come poke around. All right, well, uh, Krog Speedway was taken there by Iconic to move himself back around. Looks like Dragon's going to be taken by Styx8 as Solo is going to get the wave prepped in the bottom lane here. Golden Guardians still want to keep going here, take as many towers as they can because that's a lot of gold they can collect off this Baron. And ideally, they get access to an inhib, and I guess in the perfect scenario, mm. uh, besides, I guess, winning the game, uh, they take one inhib <laughs> off this Baron. Yeah, that would be perfect scenario for Golden Guardians. They have not had a three-game win streak all year long. They had one other two-game blip there. This one would bring it all together. They added solo in between splits, and they've been looking a lot better. Also, uh... Never had a three-year weekend, if that's the case. In which case, yep. <laughs> this could be the start of it. Okay, I, this one, I like where you're where you're going, Pacey. You know, reach for the stars. You give me a, a three-game house. You know what? Let's go four, <laughs> then. Keep on adding them up here. One I mean, step in front of the other, though. Row, surely you can win three in the same weekend. It's the same thing. <laughs> exactly. If you can win one game, you, you can, can win them all. <laughs> you can win worlds. <laughs> all right, we'll go back. We'll go back. Golden Guardians, they're pushing down bottom side. We're going to try and take out this inhib. Should be able to get it here. So feeling good about the damage they've done with this Baron buff here. Dignitas, though, definitely look to make the exit scary if they can. I, for one, am looking forward to the Ablaze Olive Tristana oh, world yes. skin. It's going to have something to do with fire and olives. I don't know. Maybe the Tristana shoots fiery yeah. olives out of the cannon. Yeah, when she activates Q, they're on fire. <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> Ship it.
Master Chef Justana. Dishing out all this. <laughs> you get some some voice lines from Gordon Ramsay in there to top it all off. That one is a banger. All right, well, Dignitas trying to recover here behind pretty far now after that Baron damage. And are going to have to deal with the Supers in the bottom side of the map for a while, which should set Golden Guardians up nicely for the Soul Point if they want it. Dragon up in three minutes, so still plenty of time before that. Yeah, we got plenty of time, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Inhibitor sitting down there. No neutral objectives coming up for at least two and a half minutes. Golden Guardians, though, they should not just sit back. You know, you, you do need to continue on with your snowball here. Two dragons for themselves is not really a leverage point. So you need to make your deep incisions in the jungle. Don't let Dignitas have safe transition routes. Take away all of these inner jungle corridors like they're doing exactly now. Well done. You back, you get your control wards, you use a control ward super deep. This allows you to push in your waves, starve out the vision of your opponents, and take down some of these now more valuable secondary turrets for yourselves to continue on with that snowball. Everyone likes Dragon on Cloud Dragon, but Cloud Rift is nice when you're ahead like this and taking down all the vision. So right in there, get some picks quicker. Exactly. Also means you die quicker if you miss, make a mistake, but it's okay. You know, it, uh, it giveth and taketh away, does the Cloud Rift. I mean, people always want to speed up the games, you know? There you go. Yeah, just everything's Cloud Rift Next now. Next season, the entire entirety of Summoner's Rift <laughs> is just sped up by passive cloud speed. Maybe after 30 minutes, they just open an airstream in uh, mid lane yeah, so I they like can it. run to the enemy Nexus faster. And it, it's only down mid. Yeah, it's <laughs> only mid. You only have, then the map gets smaller. Eventually, it's just mid lane. You have to go through. We were trying to end the game. People are like, why are they just always A Ram? It's just always going straight. Mid. Why? <laughs> so you yeah, have. We can't. <laughs> Elder Dragon destroyed Seattle Lanes. That'd be fun. All, All right. right. Well, they did get some of the gold we were looking for. They got that uh, last secondary tower picked up. The super minions are, are, are just plugging away on bottom side. So that is a source of income for Dig. Those super minions will always deny their own wave. And so while you do get the top secondary turret for Golden Guardians, Dig Talks are happy to try and funnel as much experience in onto Yusui as possible. When you get your Akali level 16, that's where you say, hey, I can kill any carry, okay? You know, you get rank three on that Akali ultimate. He's got uh, at least two and a half items now. <laughs> at least gets one usually large rod uh, in there for a little bit of extra burst. If they could just get a little bit more experience pumped into Yusui to get that level six, then maybe they can actually, you know, find that kill onto Tristana. I will say, very good purchase from a Blaze Olive to pick up that stopwatch, though, because that is one of the only things in the game, you know, that are really going to turn this one right back on you. We'll see if he has good stopwatch usage, because that is critical. Stopwatch for Akali R2 should be doable. Ooh, Yasui just barely misses out on getting slowed there by Solo. Don't think he would have gone for it, but again, at least zoning them away. They have all its control they prepared earlier after taking the tier two. The bottom hip's still down for a minute 40. So this is pretty much perfect as far as the Baron setup goes. It's just how you execute on the play. Chime, they're going to walk forward. Immediately <laughs> look to create even more space. Wild speed. Afro again. Ooh, going to get slowed up. Oh, he's so slow. Afro going to be forced to flash and pop battle song. New stride breaker forcing the flash there. And the cloud speed for Nautilus and for Nar trying to look for these picks. They do get one summoner spell. Aphromoo has to flash away, but he's still got his health bar. So, still fighting chance here for Dig as they collapse. Oh, Chime, though, has found one. Acadian, a good target to lock up. They're trying to finish the Baron here. Fake got though. Look around the back. He's just shooting it. Acadian! Acadian! He's stolen the Baron, but Golden Guardians, can they win the fight? The rest of Dig are charging on in. Solo is going to get taken out by Yasui. Oh! Fake God, though, on the front side is happening. The Marksman needs to live his stick stay. Can't go anywhere. Fake God is going to force him to flash out the back of the pit. His stick stay will escape, but Digitas get away with robbery there. All these peasants thinking we are good. LMFAO, Acadian comes in. What a Chad. Ults in, smites that Baron away, and they win the team fight afterwards too because Yasui finds the kill onto Solo as he transforms back into Mininar and turns into a viable target for the Akali. All in time, Pastry. For the Baron Empowered Recalls will allow him to get back to base, defend the Nexus turrets, pick up the dragon. Dignitas Baron. Pastry time. Not what you thought you were going to get no. when I said that phrase, <laughs> was it? All right, let's watch this one again because Amanda is trying to finish it, but Katie's like, nope. 
dunks the Baron. You cannot be stopped. You go unstoppable with your Volley Bear ultimate. So well done there by Acadian. Olsen gets the objective. Meanwhile, so much time and space acquired there. Yasui used the Shroud very well to section off uh, everybody away from the rest of the team. He gets the kill onto Solo, uses the Zonias. The rest of the team collapses, and we're right back on that party bus. Yep, death cap now done for Yasui. Baron now in the hands of Dignitas, so they can look to build themselves a bit of a lead and keep this game back to basically the even spot it's been <laughs> at for oh, 31 yeah. minutes. You see an Akali with a death cap here. That Akali can definitely kill off any carries, even with a shield bow and a guardian angels there. 6A still has to be cognizant of his positioning. Still looking there for, uh, for level 16 for himself, uh, as well as most of the rest of the members of his team, Fake God and the rest of Dig, though, they split up into the 1 4, just having Akali on top side. Teleports available for Yasui, so they really want to threaten the dive here. Volibear Ultimate able to turn off these towers. They threaten the dive with the extra speed boost up here and will allow Yasui to just go catch mid instead, waiting for the moment to actually pull the trigger. All right, well, gold is now even, but still not done here for Dig. 40 seconds of the Baron buff left. Golden Guardians considering something, but again, with you still be able to teleport in, maybe not something Golden Guardians want to take unless they can really find a good angle. Yeah, you don't want to just kind of run your head into this one because double Guardian Angels being available plus Zonia's for Diana, and those are basically all of the primary targets that you're looking for. It makes you second guess yourself. You don't want to add onto those stasises a very risky opening to a team fight, so. You have to be a little bit cautious just because of the timings of some of these very big, you know, one fight, basically, high value items of GA uh, on both of the main carries there. That's kind of what what Golden Guardians are riding on right now, what's floating them a little bit of the difference in this game. Also, it feels like we are going to get to a point where it does feel like, you know, a one fight game, especially if the Dragons drag on, if the teams can't quite find an opening around, say, the next Baron. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely on pace for a game where the team's maybe just going to flip it around Baron or Elder Dragon. Yes, sir. Let's see if they actually if they actually do just seed control because Dignitas have done a very good job of leaving behind all of those. Basically, breadcrumb wards is a term uh, that Riv always used to uh, love to use is after you make a deep push like that, leaving behind all of your wards as you exit opponent territory, allowing you for an easier setup on your uh, reset there, which is exactly what Digger doing. You know, they use that early deeper info to immediately get right back out to Baron, lay down their control wards and try and set up uh, for the arrival here way, way, way ahead of time, way ahead in preparation. All right, well, Chime is in potential trouble. Good ward, though. As uh, Golden Guardians know, they need some avenue towards this upcoming Baron eventually. And the next dragon isn't the Soul Dragon, so neither team is going to rush to take it. I think whichever team has map control will probably happily get it. Uh, right now, that is certainly Digantus. Yeah, I feel like the what you give up is way too much, because even giving up positioning on Baron is too much of a cost. Ooh, Golden Guardians going in early here. Chime has found Akadian, but again, that's the front line of Solo, though. Sectioning off Neo, Blaze Olive starting to let it rip, but Fake God's TP'd through, and now Blaze Olive tied up. Great buster shot there out of the Trist, and can they get the kill? Yasui's diving so deep, but he gets a GA. Now the rest of Dignitas goes in, and it's just carnage in the front side of the fight as Dignitas are ripping Golden Guardians apart. Sticks here, the only one left alive, but not for very long. Is that Aframu is going to find every single angle he can. Yasui's finished off Iconic, and the Guardian Angel means <laughs> nothing as Dignitas find the Bud Light Ace. Ooh, Aframu's cold there. He just even turns his back on his old lane partner. Goodbye, Stixay. I actually can't watch as they kill you off. <laughs> turns away, wipes the tears from his eyes, and runs straight down mid lane. Yeah, that's the, that's the twist in the story. It's like, I can't yeah. watch you die. I got a game to win. <laughs> exactly. As against you, as Dig R and D gonna go for here. I mean, somebody already burnt a flash. So this push, it's gonna be the last one unless something miraculous happens. But 10 seconds, no chimes up. One v five for the old support. Little uh, it's not gonna happen there. Dig a toss. We may have cursed some Kobe, but Dig will be happy to have it. It's yet another win on the weekend. Let's go, Dig Baron. Let's go, Dig Baron. Let's go, Dig Baron. Honestly. Acadian 
really coming into his own here on the LCS stage. The last few games, he's taken a very aggressive stance on jungling, throwing out a lot of ganks, skipping some key camps in order to influence these lanes. But you gotta say, biggest highlight play, Still in that Baron, just walking straight up. A big old ball of bear jumps in on the Baron, yoinks it from your team, and they get the kills on the outside. How much of a yoink? You like slam dunk the Baron? I mean, that's against Callista too. Like that is yeah. not not an easy steal to find. Yes, no, he's no, no. always gonna have access to the pit because Volley Bear, as you mentioned, cannot be stopped. Uh, and unfortunately, the Baron uh, could not be stopped either because Katie had stole it away, and that was basically the game. I mean, it's it's a little bit easier now that you have a 900 right. damage smite, but that's that's not going to cover a giant rend from a Kalista. Where those steals come from a lot is when the opponent team is trying to perfectly time it, and you can never be perfect there. You can say the same health and say, okay, at 2,000, we're rend smiting. But there's always a tiny bit of wiggle room in there because it's two players pressing the keys to get in. And man, Acadian, he did it. Full, full confidence right there. <laughs> and it looks so good. I mean, what other play do you have? Definitely gonna, that's going to be play of the game. Uh, it has to be play of the game. Uh, well, what other play you have there is you don't go in to contest it at all. No. You say, oh, we no. can't get it. That's not Acadian's way. He's on Bolly Bit. Yeah. They don't run away. Not, get in your parents, your, your parents. It's my, my bear. <laughs> I mean, Acadian definitely uh, playing really well. It's like, funny you said like, oh, he's skipping camps. He's like chain ganking people. I'm like, oh, like when he first joined the LCS. That's my memory of Acadian is like playing champions like Graves. You mm. think would just farm, and he's just running into people's lanes and mowing them down. <laughs> Some aggro play definitely is exciting to see here. All right, well, with that, we are going to be heading over to the stage to join.